do something better about that. So the big dig replaced the central artery with a series of tunnels under and around the city to stick all that car traffic under everyone. And the Ted Williams Tunnel crossing between South Boston and the airport on our port side behind you was part of that project. Ultimately, the big dig went several years past how long it was supposed to take. It was originally budgeted for $2.3 billion. In the end, it ended up costing more than $20 billion adjusted for inflation. Steep cost, people debate whether it was worth it, but does mean that we on our cruise got to go right over a highway tunnel without even noticing it. Now, I mentioned the port side where it dumped the Ted Williams Tunnel dumps out cars by the airport. That's actually why South Boston became such a hot spot for those shiny new glass and steel structures you saw. Business investors suddenly had a way to move their people between an office park and the airport in only 15 minutes if there happened to be no traffic. Of course, there usually is traffic, but still put them so much closer to the airport than they would have been able to afford previously. That's why just in the last 10 years, South Boston has built up so much into that innovation district we see today. The airport, speaking of, off our port side, one of the very few times I will point your attention off the port, you'll notice that it too sits primarily on man-made land, because, of course, you don't want to land an airplane on a hill. But Logan International Airport, 2,400 acres of it, is not entirely artificial land. By the way, folks, grab a handrail if you're standing. But there were actually three islands that they used to build the rest of Logan International Airport's runways that formed the foundation for the rest of the man land that was artificially built there. The largest and the one that was closest to us, which you can still see today as a low grassy mound next to those runways off the port side, was Governor's Island because it was owned by the first governor of Massachusetts, John Winthrop. Another smaller one was called Bird Island. Seabirds nested there, that's one reason it got its name, but there's also the fact that it was a gallows island. I'll pause for the airplane, hold on. Thank you, JetBlue. We love you, too. <laughs> now, Bird Island, it was a gallows island. During the golden age of piracy, they would hang the bodies of executed pirates there in chains to rot and for the birds to come eat their flesh. This was a warning to other would-be pirates. But a much prettier story comes from the smallest of the three islands that later became Logan Airport, and that was Apple Island. Now, apples are not native to North America. They had to be brought here and planted. The colonists, being good Englishmen, like to drink a lot, and they like to drink a lot of apple cider in particular. So in short order, they were establishing an apple orchard out there on Apple Island, where the airport is today. It was the first place where apples, plums, and pears were grown in the New World. And it was from Apple Island that a man named John Chapman began his adventure in the early days of the American Republic, planting apple orchards all across the new country, everywhere he went. Hope some of you got a good photo of that one. That was beautiful. But John Chapman, the guy who went and planted all those apple orchards, starting right here in Boston Harbor, you probably know him better as Johnny Appleseed. Now I want to draw your attention off our stern, another one of those rare times I point you a different direction than starboard. So looking behind us, we have a hazy but beautiful view of the Boston skyline today. I especially want to point out the cluster of tall buildings toward what you're seeing as the left as you face back, rising above the tan buildings on the wharf pointing toward us. The one that is sort of uh, skinny and rectangular and blue. It looks kind of like a PlayStation. That's actually the tallest building in New England. People here in Boston know it as the John Hancock Tower. That's no longer its official name because John Hancock Insurance Company is no longer a tenant, but they're the people that building was built for. But they had a problem when it was first built. 
Boston's high winds and shoddy window installation meant that the windows on the upper floors kept getting blown out and crashing down on the sidewalks beneath. Not ideal, it terrified the pedestrians and it made the Hancock Company look incredibly foolish. They were especially embarrassed that their building was starting to be called the world's tallest plywood tower for how many of the broken windows had to be boarded up. So they decided to sue the window company that installed those faulty fixtures. They soon withdrew their suit and settled out of court though because they quickly learned that the insurer for the window company was John Hancock. Everything between us and those tall buildings in the Back Bay neighborhood, which incidentally used to be a bay before we turned it into land, everything between us and there is artificial man-made land. I point that out now because we're now on the starboard side coming up on the first piece of natural land that you're seeing on this entire cruise, and that is Castle Island. Back in colonial times, Castle Island hosted Castle William, a small wooden fort that defended the harbor. The British burned it down when they evacuated Boston in 1776. To replace it, this beautiful stone fort, Fort Independence, was built, commissioned by President John Adams. It was actually right here at Fort Independence that a young private named Edgar Perry began some of his writing work. He was a very sad guy. You probably know him better as Edgar Allan Poe. But you'll notice that those kind people on Castle Island that you were waving at, they're having a great day on the waterfront. They're walking along the water, they're fishing, and that's one of 34 of the popular islands of Boston Harbor Islands National Park, which we're now sailing into. But the Boston Harbor Islands were not always a pleasant place to visit. People went fish there, people went swim there. 50 years ago, Boston Harbor was one of the dirtiest harbors in the United States. Today, it's one of the cleanest, and these harbor islands are going to help me tell you the story of how that happened. First, I want to point out off our starboard bow, for those who can see it, to uh, the largest, or tallest I should say, of the harbor islands, Spectacle Island. It looks like 200 or so foot tall hills. It's called Spectacle Island because from above it looks like a pair of gentlemen's spectacles. But that island is a lot bigger and taller than it used to be. It grew by over 30 acres, it grew over 100 feet in height. How do you think an island like that grows? Trash, garbage from Boston and dozens of surrounding communities. From the 1910s through the 1950s, Spectacle Island was a trash heap. And of course, Boston being windy, a lot of that trash ended up in the harbor. So, how do you think they decided to get rid of all this trash once the 60s hit and they realized it was not a sustainable situation? They burned it. The island burned for 10 years. Some people say you can navigate Boston Harbor by the smell alone. It took 10 years to burn. Eventually, they were able to take dirt from the big dig, cap off the island, plant those trees, and make it the beautiful park you see today. The next part of the harbor cleanup story involves what looks like some really tall dinosaur eggs off the starboard side. You can see an island with some hills and a large tank. If you follow your eye to the right, there's roughly a dozen large egg-shaped structures. This leads us to the second thing that made Boston Harbor so gross for so long. Those structures are called sludge digesters, and they form part of the Deer Island Wastewater Treatment Plant. Ever since foundation, the people of Boston simply pumped their raw sewage out into the harbor. Because, of course, they reasoned, the tide will take it out, straight out to the ocean. But what does the tide do twice a day? It comes back in. So, along with all the trash from Spectacle Island, Boston Harbor was full of sewage from Boston and its surrounding cities. In fact, for me to be out here on this boat talking to you in 1984, the law would have required me to have a tetanus shot because of how polluted the water was. Though, it also would have smelled so much, none of you would have paid to be on this boat with me. So, the people of Boston took their city to court. And, they won. I like to think all the federal judge had to do was stick his nose out the window to tell what had to be done. He ordered that the Deer Island treatment plant be built at a cost of $3.8 billion. 
It's the second largest structure of its kind in the United States. It treats more than 800 million gallons of wastewater every single day. And in, a course, in the course of only about 10 years, it was able to reverse the centuries of sewage pollution here in Boston Harbor. It has two end products. One of them is water that they say is clean enough to drink. They send it 10 miles out to sea through an underwater tunnel. The other product gets moved also in a tunnel to a city south of Boston called Quincy. And in Quincy, they turn it into rich black fertilizer pellets that in turn get shipped to Florida. But that's our book, Codzilla. It's a lot of fun. I wrote it for the first time recently. And it's on Codzilla where you will learn for sure whether the mythic giant monster cod fed by the sewage treatment plant actually exists. Yes, we ship those fertilizer pelts to Florida. In Florida, they grow oranges. And so when you're enjoying your tall glass of orange juice in the morning, you can thank the people of Boston for making that possible. Grab a hold, everyone. We're catching the wake from Godzilla. Now, those of you visiting Boston, we also thank you for your contributions to the fertilizer. We're passing alongside the airport once again. You already know all about the airport and the three islands that be later became it. I'm gonna pause now, give you a chance to get some great photos of the two airplanes coming in behind you and all our other surroundings. I'll see you again in a few minutes. <laughs>